all this come together made Haiti already uh, the most poor country in Latin America before the earthquake on January the 12th. The earthquake has only aggravated the situation in Haiti. It has only made things worse. And uh, yesterday, we had uh, already six months after, after uh, the earthquake. And what is being discussed now is about the recovery process. How is it going in Haiti? And of course, we all know that the recovery process is still very slow. Uh, it has not really created an impact uh, on the uh, Haitian population. And it is due to various reasons. First of all, because the government in Haiti has been overwhelmed by the impact of this tragedy. Uh, looking, beginning with a, a national palace in Haiti, it collapsed. Many uh, buildings uh, belonging to different ministries also collapsed. Government officials died. Uh, government uh, families uh, also died in this tragedy and friends. So they were originally overwhelmed by what took place. So they were in a state of confusion. Uh, there were no uh, institutional working channels uh, to deal with at the beginning of this, of this tragedy. It is only in the last few weeks that uh, an institution has been created, the Interim Commission for the Recovery of Haiti. And uh, I think that through this commission, which is a, a bipartisan commission between members of the different parties in Haiti, but also from international donors, uh, and this uh, commission is headed by President Clinton and the Prime Minister of Haiti, Jean-Max Berif. We have a lot of hope that through the commission, there will be an institutional channel to push forward the recovery process in Haiti. Another reason why we have not seen yet any real progress in the recovery of Haiti is because the international community has not fully delivered on its pledges. Only about 10% of what has been committed has already been uh, delivered to Haiti. And much of that, not to the uh, Haitian government, but specifically through NGOs or civil society organizations, which creates a, an image problem for the uh, Haitian government because the people hold the government accountable uh, and the government has not had enough resources to really respond to people's needs. But I think now with uh, uh, the commission already in place, with the uh, summit we recently held in Punta Cana, uh, Dominican Republic, to follow up on the uh, UN donors meeting held in, in March in New York, there was uh, a reiteration of the commitment by different countries that they will come through with their pledges in terms of the recovery for Haiti. What we do think is that a full recovery for Haiti will take at least 10 years to really have an impact. It is not going back to where Haiti was before the earthquake. It is really creating a more vibrant economy, a more modernized uh, nation, a nation integrated into the world economy, uh, a population better educated, having access to health care, water supply, electricity. All this takes time. But beyond culture, beyond music, there is also business. Latin America represents a trade relationship with the US of nearly $250 billion yearly. That is much more than the European Union, that is much more than China. So in terms of trade, Latin America matters uh, to the US. Latin America matters uh, because, also from the dark side, because all the uh, drugs, all the illicit trafficking of drugs that comes into the US comes from the Andean countries comes from the Caribbean nations. So this also matters uh, for uh, the United States. And uh, if we have any doubt, uh, let me say that uh, if there's any doubt that Latin America matters uh, in, the, in the US, we have now 41 million Latinos living in the United States. That's 15% of uh, all the people living here in this country. And finally, the Dominican Republic has become uh, the most important country exporting Major League Baseball players to the United States. <laughs> right? And with that, I hope that Albino Jimenez wins the, uh, for the National League in the All-Star Game. Thank you so much. At this moment, I think uh, the most pressing issue has to do with security. Uh, drug trafficking, 
violence, transnational crime, has become a priority uh, through all the region. You can look at Mexico, what's taking place with the drug cartels there, uh, Central America, the, the Caribbean, us in the Dominican Republic, where it used to be just a springboard you know, for drug trafficking in the region. Now, uh, part of that drug is, is, has stayed in the Dominican Republic, creating a market we never had before. And uh, young people from low-income families have become addicted. And this has created a violence, a wave of violence related to uh, drug trafficking and crime we never had in the Dominican Republic. But it's taking place everywhere. And so I think this can be a major issue for national security in the US, not only because of drugs, but because we might have failed states in the region due to transnational crime. And uh, after that, with failed states, you can have a target for terrorism. So it is important for the US to understand that there are two war fronts at this, at this moment. You have a war front against terrorism, and you need a war front against drug trafficking in the region. So this is a priority. Now, talking about a strategy for competitiveness, what I mean is that our vision for development uh, needs to take into consideration the inevitability to integrate within the world markets, within the world economy. So it's not only satisfying the internal demand, but also integrating into the world economy. And in order to do that, there is a need for innovation, and there is a basic need for high quality education, which is something that uh, at some point we should talk about. If we don't have high quality education, especially at our universities, that means the gap between the developed world and underdeveloped will even widen. At this moment, among the 200 uh, universities ranked as world-class universities, we don't find one from Latin America. And that's, that's to be of deep concern. Because if we lose any edge in terms of educating our workforce or our elites, that means that we will not be able to compete in the 21st century. So we have to pay close attention also, science, technology, innovation, and the quality of higher education.